Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Welcome to my first fall video for 2022. I made five new coastal fall DIYs and I can't wait to show you how I put all five of these together. I know my Dollar Tree doesn't have any fall stuff out yet, but we're going to use some creativity and make our own. I was so glad to find these little sticks at Dollar Tree again. I haven't been able to find these there forever. As you can see, they have some that are kind of like twigs. Some are like shorter and flatter. It looks like they tried to like package together similar sizes. Cause like out of these two bags, they're actually all three bags. They're completely a different kind of size and shape. So what I want to do is to try to make like a pumpkin out of these. Um, I've seen some people make pumpkins out of like wine corks. So I thought maybe I could do something similar with these and have a nice coastal pumpkin feel. Now, some of these are larger than others. Um, I'm gonna do like a five, four, three um, count on those. And so my row of five, I'm gonna do like the five larger ones and then kind of fill in the other rows. So it's gonna be like three, four, five, four, three. And hopefully that'll give me like somewhat of an oval shape. I did have to open up another package to kind of get the same kind of size. So make sure you look at them when you buy them if you want to do a project with a bunch of them to make sure that you're getting some that are like similar in size. You can do something like this. And I'm just simply hot gluing them all together. So I did my middle row of five first, and then I'm just going to glue on to that first row. Um, there's like two points of contact if you kind of put it in between the two above it. And so I'm just putting two um, rows of hot glue on there. And when I can, I try to glue them to each other too. I'm trying to avoid any like major gaps. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here with row number three. And that is the bottom of our pumpkin. I flipped it over and added a little bit more hot glue to the back to try to make it a little bit stronger. And then I just have to do the top two rows. I'm gonna do it exactly the same. Um, just gluing it to both of the twigs that it is attached to. And the last row is a three. So I'm gonna kind of have a gap there, but I'm gonna kind of work with that because maybe I can just put a stem there. I was trying to find a piece, the perfect size. I got pretty close. And again, just gluing it a little bit on the back, but I still felt it wasn't quite strong enough. And so I thought I would just use some burlap. This is one of those burlap rolls from Walmart and kind of just cut out an oval shape for the back. That way I can glue that onto the back of my pumpkin. But if you like see through my pumpkin with the holes or gaps, it's gonna kind of blend into the wood color of the little twigs. So I'm just gonna attach that to the back with some hot glue. And I found that that really helped secure it and make it way more solid. And there is our pumpkin so far. Just trying to clean up any hot glue on there. And this is the kind of decorative nautical rope, the nine and a half foot from Dollar Tree, that I'm gonna use to try to make a pumpkin stem. Now, I know a lot of people are wanting to get into fall videos, and so I know my Dollar Tree doesn't have anything yet, so I thought, let's try to be creative and try to make some pumpkins and such without the supplies. So I cut three pieces all the same size of the rope, and then I'm just gonna simply glue them together there at the bottom. And I kind of have that gap there in the top and I'm just gonna kind of take advantage of that and hot glue my rope right into there. But you can kind of attach yours, you know, however you can get it in there. 
Mine's kind of at a weird angle, but I'm going to work with it. To make the pumpkin stem, I'm going to take one of the ropes straight, and then I'm going to take two together and wrap that around the one rope. And I'm using hot glue to secure that like as I go until I kind of have something similar to a pumpkin stem. I thought the rope would add a nice coastal touch as well. I'm gonna fray out the edges when I get to the end to make it look all messy there at the end. Now it was kind of sticking out like at a weird angle so I was trying to like kind of curve it more towards the top a little bit. And then I wanted to do a pumpkin leaf but I thought I would do something maybe a little bit more tropical. So I'm gonna use one of these floral picks from Dollar Tree and I picked out kind of a tropical leaf just to do like one little pumpkin leaf here on the top. I'm trying to figure out what direction it should go. And I am just gonna glue that onto the front there and kind of glue down my stem to the top as well so it kind of stays where I want it. I got to this point and I was like, I'm not really sure if it looks like a pumpkin, an apple, <laughs> what it looks like, but I hope it kind of looks like a pumpkin. And I wanted to give it, you know, one of those little pumpkin, what are they called, tendrils at the top? And so I'm gonna use some of this wire jute from Dollar Tree and simply just wrap that around like a pen-like surface to give myself a nice spiral. I have trouble working with this stuff because I find that it separates from the wire a lot, so you have to be really careful not to mess with it too much. And I am just gonna wrap that wired jute around our little pumpkin stem. I was hoping that would give it a little bit more pumpkin flair. And cut that off. I find that my scissors that cut the wire don't cut the twine, these floral scissors. And so that's where I kind of struggle, is getting the end to not look all crazy. But I think we've about got it. Just gonna make sure the back of that is glued down too and we have a little pumpkin. I think I must have missed a video in there because I did use an aqua paint pen and try to paint some little pumpkin stripes there on the front. And then I thought it needed another little coastal touch so I'm just gonna glue a seashell to the top just as an extra little decoration. I'm not sure if my lines really helped or not but they made me feel better <laughs> about it being a pumpkin. And let me show you how it looks on my shelf. I think it turned out really cute. Our first pumpkin DIY. Okay, for our next project, I'm gonna use some of the scrapbook paper that I got on clearance at Michael's, I believe. And basically, I'm just looking for an ocean scene. You could use like a calendar, scrapbook paper, whatever you've got. I've even used a poster. <laughs> but I basically wanted a nice beachy scene to go with my coastal DIYs. I'm gonna use that together with a sign that I found at the thrift store for half off. It was only like $1.50. It's just a flat wood sign. And it's the right size, nice heavy piece of wood. And I'm gonna use that as a guide um, so I can go ahead and cut my scrapbook paper down to size. And um, the nice thing about using scrapbook paper is that it's nice and thick, so I'm not going to have to paint it under, um, underneath the paper. You're not going to be able to see that writing or anything through it. So we're just going to simply Mod Podge over this Live, Laugh, Love sign. It kind of has a beveled edge around the front of it, um, but I just kind of cut to the outside and will deal with anything that's left over after I get it on here and secure. So I did a nice thick coat of Mod Podge and just securing the scrapbook paper over it. It's a nice kind of like card stocky material. And I like to use my Cricut brayer to make sure it's down and smooth and no bubbles. And then I'm just gonna go around the edges with my sanding block from Dollar Tree and kind of try to cut that off to size, kind of make it look a little bit um, weathered and frayed as well and make it kind of go with that bevel that was already on there. Then I'm just going to go over it with more Mod Podge. I want to seal this down because I want this to be like a secure surface where I can do a hand painted sign on and I don't want my stencils sticking to the paper. 
So once I get the Mod Podge on there, I like to go over it with my, my little Cricut brayer again. I find that helps me get rid of the bubbles. And I did have one bubble that tried to pop up on here. And just going over it with another coat as soon as I got it dry. Just really trying to get this sealed as possible so that we can um, do our stencil. Now the edges of this sign were black and that didn't really um, kind of go with the sign very much. So I'm just going in there with some white acrylic and just kind of distressing a nice coastal white all around the edges of our sign. And I think this is going to be a great background. I have an idea for a saying that kind of goes with fall and the ocean. And I thought it would be perfect for the sign. So I'm just going to kind of measure. This is about a nine and a half by nine and a half inch sign. So I can know what size square to use on my Cricut. And then I went and designed um, this stencil. And I will share a link below for my Cricut file if you want to recreate. I use the stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon. I really like it. It's really easy to use. It does bleed sometimes if you don't use Mod Podge or something first, but I'm usually going for a coastal look like I am today, so I don't really care too much about the bleeding on there. And I think I forgot to weed a word there, but I do find that here in a minute. But I'm just going through and weeding that all out, trying to make sure the inside of my letters are staying down. And then this is my favorite transfer paper. I also get this on Amazon. I'll post a link both to both below the um, transfer paper and the vinyl stencil in case you need some. A roll of this paper, transfer paper, lasts forever. And I'm just going to pull that off. I can kind of see through it where the edge of the sign is so I know where to line up my stencil. And now I'm just going to try to peel off that paper transfer paper and make sure everything stays down and attached here to our sign. I want it to stick well to my sign, but you know, not too well to the paper that I worked so hard to seal. And then I, that's when I realized that I forgot like a whole word. <laughs> so it's not too late. I'm just going to go ahead and weed that out. And our saying is autumn leaves and an ocean breeze. And that couldn't be more perfect for my coastal fall decor. So I'm just trying to smooth it down with my Cricut scraper as good as I can to get a nice seal. I go in with white acrylic, which I, maybe I should have used chalk paint because this might have been a little bit thin. And maybe I should have daubed instead of going side to side because I did have bleeding on this probably more than I normally do. But I do a thick um, or a thin coat and dry it and then go back over with one more thin coat because I want the white words to kind of stand out on our ocean background. I get it dry, but I don't get it like super dry. I don't want this stencil paper on my paper as um, I want it on there as short of time as possible. So I just pull that off and then all I have left to do is weed the vinyl out from all the between the letters and you can see that there was bleeding it's going to be okay though what i'm going to do is just kind of go in with a baby wipe and try to wipe off any of the areas where there's really excess paint um, i'm going to distress it anyway so i don't think you're going to be able to tell in the final product but just trying to clean it up a little bit before i go ahead and distress it and then I'm just going to use one of those chunky brushes from Dollar Tree in that same um, white acrylic paint it was. And just kind of distress in one direction, going over with a baby wipe, um, wiping off any excess. And it really gave it a nice, like, it makes it look like a painting instead of paper on the background. Now, I thought for a final touch, we need a little autumn leaf. So I found some of these white leaves from Dollar Tree. This is the only fall stuff they have out in my Dollar Tree so far is the fall flowers. And so I picked up a lot of the white and a lot of the blue. I really like the blue leaves they have as well. And I thought I would just attach that in the corner of our sign with a little bit of hot glue. A nice little fall touch to our autumn sign. And then I want it to be a stand-up sign because I'm going to have it on my shelf. And so to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue on a couple of these. These are the giant Jenga blocks. I get these at five below. They're a great deal, but you can use whatever you have. 
and you can kind of make any sign a standing sign. And I love how this thrift flip turned out. I think it's so beautiful and this is gonna look great sitting next to that pumpkin that we just made. This is how it looks in my fall decor. I love that saying, it's so fun. Okay, our next DIY, we're gonna use some of these bamboo rings from the Dollar Tree. They come in a package with a larger one and a smaller one. I happen to have two larger ones from a previous DIY when I used the smaller ones to make the toilet paper holder uh, for my coastal bathroom DIY video. If you haven't seen that video, you should go watch it. There's a lot of really cute practical DIYs in that. And I thought I would just put three of them together inside each other like this to try to make kind of a pumpkin shape out of these little bamboo rings. Totally doesn't want to stand up though. So I'm kind of thinking, I don't think I can really hot glue this very well. How on earth am I going to keep this together? And then I decided that the, the best thing would probably be a nail um, in the top and the bottom. That way they could kind of move and be flexible like that, um, but stay together. Now I don't want the nail pointing down inside of it, so I'm going to kind of nail from inside. And this is going to be the top of the pumpkin. And I just put some um, craft wood down to make sure that I don't hammer that into my silicone mat. It does kind of split the wood. Um, it's okay though, because we are gonna cover that part up. And I got that in there nice and secure. Now I need to do the same thing, I think, for the bottom um, to secure that as well. But since it's not gonna stand up, um, I think I'm gonna have to build a base for it. I tried to use a little bit of hot glue to stabilize the bottom, but it kinda needs a nail through it, kinda like the top. Now for the base, I wanted something kinda small, so I'm gonna use one of these little wreath charms, I think they're called from Dollar Tree, um, that I had the, from Spring. Um, if you can't find that, you can kind of use whatever you have. One of those like chunky um, wood circles from the Dollar Tree would work really good. That was my second choice. And I don't really want that spring saying to show through, um, but I do want to kind of cover that up a little bit to kind of make a little base for our pumpkin. So I'm just going to do like um, a rough coat of white acrylic all over. I kind of want to... You know, you, I don't want you to see the words through it, but I'm not going for a perfect coat because I am going to cover this up. And what I'm going to cover it up with is those same white leaves that I got at the Dollar Tree to kind of make a nice little um, floral base to this. So I'm cutting all the stems off. And this one kind of had, I kind of used a tan one for my first DIY. I'm gonna use all white ones on this one. They're kind of on the same one. Um, there's just two different colors on there. So I'm just gonna do it four, kind of poking out, you know, each side. And then I don't really want like the center part of it to be visible either because again, there was some writing on that. And so I do go ahead and do a fifth one um, just right in the center. And I just want it to look like a pile of leaves for the bottom of our pumpkin. Okay, so once I got that all secure, now I'm ready to nail the bottom of this pumpkin to it. What I wanna do is put a nail through all three layers of the bamboo rings into the base. And I have these little tiny picture hanging nails. They worked really well for this. Just a matter of getting it all lined up and getting the nail to go exactly where you want it to go. So that was the tricky part and nailing inside of the pumpkin as well. <laughs> I think this was the right idea though. Um, the only thing it could be better. It might not split if you pre-drill your holes, but mine did split on both um, the top and the bottom when I did use that. Now, this is what I'm gonna use, the nautical rope um, from the Dollar Tree. It's not the real wide one. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the top. 
What I'm going to do is line the inside of the bamboo rings with the rope to give a nice little coastal touch inside of our little pumpkin. So the outside will be wood and the inside of it will be rope. Now the inner ring is all um, accessible. So I can just do one circle of the rope all the way around. But for the other two rings, I'm going to have to like kind of cut a half a piece and a half a piece to kind of work around the rings that are overlapped inside there, if that makes sense. So we got our first one on there. And then again, just going to go all the way up to the top where it meets with another ring and then I'll have to cut that off. And I'm just going to keep gluing those on. I think this looks a little bit like a pumpkin because it has like the different like pumpkin sections. It is kind of round though. It's not real oval. My son told me it did not look like a pumpkin because it was not the right shape. But I said, Dollar Tree doesn't have any fall stuff yet. So this is a pumpkin. <laughs> I said, not all pumpkins are oval, right? <laughs> but I really like how it turned out. I think it's really cute. So I am just finishing lining that. One um, benefit of using the rope inside is that it covered up any of the cracks that I made by nailing through the bamboo rings. But it's kind of cool because you can kind of still, you know, kind of move all of the rings to get it like open kind of perfectly. And then for a pumpkin stem, I thought I would use, these are the skinnier twigs that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm trying to pick out the perfect one. I just want a little bit of a bend, but I want it to look nice and rustic. And since I still have that nail sticking out of the top of my rings, I'm just going to use that same nail to nail into the stem of the pumpkin. So I was trying to be smart here with my nails. So no nails are sticking out and they all kind of serve a purpose. Now for the little tendril that comes out of the side of the pumpkin, I'm going to use some of this wired jute again, just wrapping that around like a pen shape. Um, this one I wasn't like thrilled with. <laughs> again, I, it falls apart on me. Do you guys know any tricks um, to make this not fall apart? I would love to hear. Please comment below. <laughs> and I'm just going to wrap that around our stem and kind of cut that off. Cut off any rough parts of our little pumpkin tendril. And I wanted to give a little beachy touch to this. And so I'm going to use one of these um, Dollar Tree Shore Living... Um, Starfish, that's what they are. Um, but it's white and I wanted to give it a little bit of color. So I'm going to go in and just paint it. This is Caribbean blue acrylic. And I'm just going in and going to paint the top and the bottom of our starfish. And just make it a little blue starfish. I wanted to put that in it to bring a little color to this pumpkin DIY. But I also thought it would be even cuter if I made it into a candle holder. So I have one of these clear glass candle holders. I believe I got this from the Dollar Tree. Either the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Spot at Target. And it's perfect for a little battery operated tea light candle. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to attach that to the rope that's inside the base. I'm trying really hard to get it on there as secure and level as possible. Since um, everything's flammable on this, the battery operated candle is definitely the way to go. And that fits perfectly in there. And then we're just going to use the little starfish. Just as a little pop of color in front of our candle. And here is the final pumpkin project. Let me show you how it looks on my shelf. I have it next to one of my um, Shore Living Dollar Tree DIYs, and I think it looks really cute. I like to do my seasonal stuff right up aside my regular beach stuff. You guys, if you haven't joined our private Facebook group, I'll post a link in the description below. Come on over. All the Crafty Beach Fums are over there. Everyone shares their DIYs, and you guys are so talented. I get so many great ideas from all of you. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and you can come visit me over there for some reels or some shorts. Okay, I found... 
these great frames at Dollar Tree. I picked up four of them. They have a great coastal beachy frame and the galvanized metal um, in them already. And I thought we could make a great wall sign for fall. So I don't really need uh, these little stands on the back. Um, they're kind of just made out of cardboard. So I'm kind of ripping those off. Um, I'm trying to do as little damage as possible, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull off the little metal parts too and just leave the backing on there. I'm not really gonna be taking these apart at all. Now they have these little um, hooks for pictures, which we don't need. And so I'm just gonna use my screwdriver to unscrew the little clips on all of those. That leaves me with a nice galvanized metal piece with only one hole that I really have to worry about. And I thought we could do like a long sign made out of these for fall spelling out the word fall. So I am just gonna do use this white rope from the Dollar Tree to kind of try to spell out the letters. This is kind of the thicker one. And I thought fall, those letters would all be pretty easy to do with rope. So I thought that would add a fun little coastal touch to the DIY as well. I was kind of trying to decide if I wanted to kind of do the F all in one piece and kind of have it rounded on the edges, but I decided I kind of wanted it more boxy looking. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out the pieces for my letters, um, kind of using one letter as a guide for the next letter. I know the L's are gonna have some straight lines and the rest of my F, and then kind of using that as a guide because I know that L, L at the end are gonna need to be about the same length. The A will be a little bit different, so I'll do that one on its own. And I'm simply going to hot glue the white rope onto the galvanized metal. It's kind of like a bumpy um, galvanized metal. And gluing my F down one piece at a time there. And then I plan to um, attach all of these signs together to do like a long sign for my wall. So the A I kind of measure to see how long I need one piece. That one's gonna be a little bit different in sizing than my other letters. And just simply gluing those on, trying not to get like hot glue like outside the rope because I don't want that part to be very visible. And fall is definitely a nice, quick, short word that we can spell out. And with the heat wave that's going on like everywhere in the world, <laughs> I bet we are all ready for some fall. I would like to take this moment to thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like my content, content don't forget to hit the like button on YouTube. After you're done watching, if you could comment your favorite DIY below. I love reading all of your comments and it helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. And if you haven't subscribed, we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. I know we'll be there soon. I know I've been kind of out of the loop a little bit because I've been sick, but we are back in business, baby. <laughs> so I got all of my letters all glued down, and so now we can start putting our frames together. I just do a bead of hot glue, and these are really square. And so um, it's actually pretty secure when I glue them together like that. I like to use Gorilla Glue hot glue. I find it works really well on wood, and it's so quick and easy. Um, to DIY, you don't have to wait for anything to really dry. And so F-A-L-L, -L, we have all of our signs glued together. And I thought this was a very fun sign for the wall, a nice long skinny sign, but I wanted to give it maybe another coastal beach touch. And I have some of these cute little sea turtles that were in the shore living line at Dollar Tree. And I thought maybe we could add like maybe a touch of blue and maybe some sea life to the sign to make it a little bit more coastal. So I decided to use five of the little sea turtles. I love sea turtles so much. And I want to make them like a beachy blue color. So I'm going to mix some colors together, like half Caribbean blue, half white, um, to give me this very soft beachy color. And I'm just going to use a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree um, to simply paint all of our little sea turtles 
I may have had a little bit too much paint on there, but I'm just gonna kind of um, wipe off any excess paint on those, kind of give them a nice little beachy feel. And what I want is like the little sea turtles to look like they're running up the sun, like little sea turtles, like running out to the ocean. Oh, that reminds me, I'm going to a sea turtle release very soon. Um, I know I've recorded those for you guys before and put them in my videos and you guys have always enjoyed them. So I will be sure to try to do that. And I'm just distressing lightly with a little bit of ivory acrylic to give them a little bit of a beachy vibe before we attach them to our fall sign. So I'm gonna kind of stagger them, kind of alternate each side where the frames kind of come together and one on the top and the bottom. So like three on one side and two on the other. And I'm also gonna like kind of alternate like which direction they're kind of like tilting, which direction they're kind of walking. to Kind of give it the appearance that they're on the move. And the sea turtle release that I'm going to is actually, um, the tour to turtles where they have little sensors on them and then you can track them online and find out exactly where they go, which is so fun. Okay, this is the finished product and it just needs a hanger. I'm just gonna use a little bit of twine. I am out of picture hanger. So I'm just gonna glue a little piece of twine to the top of this one. And I think that's gonna work fine to hang this on the wall, a nice flat little hanger. And let me show you how this new coastal fall sign looks hanging in my entryway. I think it's so cute. I love the rope and the galvanized metal and the wood. It's very coastal and then I love the little sea turtles. All right, y'all, this is our last DIY. I picked up three of these oval chunky signs from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could make a pumpkin out of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the tags off the backs. They have a nice like beveled edge. I thought I would do the same color on these that I used on the little sea turtles, mixing together half Caribbean blue, half um, ivory to get this real soft blue color. I think that's really pretty and I love a blue pumpkin. I'm gonna go ahead and paint all these before I put them together to make them look like a pumpkin. Just because it has all the edges and nooks and crannies, I thought it would be easier to paint um, before I assemble our pumpkin. So I'm just gonna make sure that I get blue on the tops and all the little grooves and around the sides of our pumpkin. These signs are really nice and chunky, so I think that once I get it put together, it's all gonna stand up and be kind of a standalone piece. And I love this color of blue, it's so fun. And this may have been my favorite DIY of the day. I really like how this one turns out. All right, once I get all of these, this beachy blue, um, I wanna go in and um, attach them together. So I'm gonna put two side by side like that, kinda using a straight edge to try to make sure that I kinda keep it level and then stack one of the ovals on top of it like this. It totally looks like a pumpkin. And so I'm just gonna use hot glue in the middle sections where it is going to overlap the other two signs and trying to keep that as square as I can with my straight edge. I'm just gonna glue that on top, securing that to the two plaques on the back. Now I'm just gonna use some ivory acrylic and my chunky brush and I'm just gonna kind of distress it slightly around the edges to kind of give that um, 3D feel to our little pumpkin. Wiping off any excess with a baby wipe. If you wipe off too much, you can always go back and distress it a little bit more. And kind of distressing around all the edges as well. Um, anything blue distress looks really coastal and beachy for my house. And this pumpkin just turned out so sweet. Okay, for the stem, I'm gonna kinda do the same technique that we used on that first one, the wood um, twig or wood stick pumpkin. I'm gonna do three um, pieces of this thinner brown rope. And I'm gonna kind of try to braid them together like we did before. I tried to make this one a little longer than I did the first time because I didn't feel like that one was very long and you can always make it shorter later if you get it too long. 
So I'm going to assemble it the same way. I'm going to glue the three pieces to each other here at the base of our pumpkin stem. And how do you guys make your pumpkin stems? I saw some people make them out of paper bags and that intrigued me. But I love using rope because I think it looks really coastal. And so I think this turned out pretty cool. So again, I'm using one straight rope and then taking the two together and just wrapping that around it in a spiral fashion all the way around the one rope using hot glue to secure that as I go until I run out of rope here on the top. So I'm gonna secure that last row. Now my one that's straight is longer, so I will have to just go in and trim that part off. Kind of, um, I kind of left the end a little bit unraveled there. And if you get any hot glue that's exposed, you can um, just melt that off with your heat gun. And I kind of want it to be a nice um, curve in my pumpkin stem. Just attaching it to this little space here in the back of our pumpkin onto the back of the top sign. And kind of bending it over to the side. Now, I like it, I think it's cute, but it was a little floppy when I would stand it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this wire jute for the little pumpkin tendril. So I thought I would just go ahead and multi-purpose also using it to wrap around the rope. It matches in with the rope because it's the same color, of course, the jute. And so you can't tell it's there and my pumpkin stem will keep its shape. Leaving a long tail on there that I can then wrap around a pen. Or this is actually, I use these for cake decorating supplies from the Dollar Tree. I love using those for hot glue and making a little pumpkin tendril kind of sticking out of the side of our pumpkin stem. Super cute. Then I thought it, it just needed one more thing, a coastal touch. So I'm gonna use one of those starfish from Dollar Tree in the Shore Living Line, and I'm just gonna glue that onto the front of our pumpkin. And these signs were so thick and chunky that this totally stands up on its own. I don't need to make a stand or anything but you could always hang it on the wall if you wanted to make a hanger for the back. Isn't that cute? I love how this one turned out. So fun. And this is how it looks on my shelf. We are almost ready for the final reveal, but first I always love to thank all the supporters of my channel, the following Crafty Beach Bums for sending me super thanks underneath my videos. It's a quick way for you to support your favorite creator here on YouTube where you can leave a tip as little as $2. And also for these guys for buying me a coffee and I always have a link to that in my video description. And it's very helpful for a small channel like mine. Thank you so much for watching. Here's the final reveal. Open up the window. I'm breathing in the last of September. I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant ember Everything is turning into gold When the autumn leaves are playing chasing Puts a smile up on my face
Feliz